Hello, I'm Rose Vital. In this series, we will explore the struggles and achievements of women living in Estonia. This includes both locals as well as migrants who reside in this northern Baltic country. In this episode, you'll get to know Kaisa, a rock singer, book author, and artist. Hi, my name is Kaisa, Kaisa Holsting. I'm 35. I was born in Estonia. I was raised in Estonia. I lived in uh, Germany for a little bit. I lived in Ireland for a few years. And um, I've traveled in many different countries due to my work uh, back in the day for Microsoft and Skype. Proud about the fact that uh, even though I had huge stage fright, I somehow fought my way back onto the stage. Um, the, the Kaiser that uh, graduated gymnasium would never have uh, gotten back on stage. I was afraid to perform again because I had had some bad experiences in the past and somehow, even though I really loved singing, I was very afraid to do so. So for the most part of my early 20s, I really spent on going to sing karaoke on, on boats from Tallinn to Helsinki to visit my boyfriend and, and uh, just taking part in uh, different competitions going back to uh, singing school, uh, taking part in musicals and, and like um, concerts and, and trying out a few different bands until I launched the one that was there in the end. I was a rock and roll singer in a band called The White High for five years. We came up with an album with and you know that made it big. Here's um, an actual album with um, my band with me inside that I designed. <laughs> also another thing to be very proud of um, because for me one of the things that I really wanted to become when I was a kid was to be an artist but I was told so many times by my parents and you know people around me and the, the society kind of showed me that I cannot be an artist and you know art isn't something that you make money with. And for me, two of my passions, music and art, both were like such career choices that nobody really supported. So if I'm being honest, I'm <laughs> this is making me so emotional. Um, I am really proud that eventually I made both of those dreams uh, come true in a magnificent manner. Ah, for instance, that's my painting. Yay! <laughs> I have a book. I'm a book author. It's a book about fused beads. They're tiny little plastic beads that little kids use to create pixel art pictures. So, and that you can iron together. And um, funnily enough, uh, in the end of my 20s, um, I actually had a jewelry brand that was doing pixel art uh, jewelry or earrings. And a company in the UK, a publisher in the UK, noticed that and um, asked me whether I would want to write a book about these few speeds and how to do designs out of them and fast forward one or two years from there it was launched in like six or seven different countries so the name Kaisa Hoisting is actually quite widely known in the Scandinavia <laughs> which is a surprise for me because I never expected it to even get that far. To be honest, I did not even believe at the time <laughs> that it's uh, for real, that the offer actually is a real deal, but it turned out to be a big deal and it turned out to be something that actually came true. And even though I am still learning how to be an artist, my um, first exhibition happened when I was 23, 22, 22 I think, uh, when I was still living in Ireland. And uh, in one year I had four different exhibitions and I was a supported uh, artist in the local community, which is kind of funny because I never had that chance here in Estonia. And uh, ever since I came back, I've been really struggling in finding that artist sense of myself again. So when it comes to biggest advantages, I would say there's quite a few as well. First off, we have all the opportunities. You go to school, you go to university, 
you can go and apply for high-end jobs if you wanted to you can go and even work in other countries um, there's a hub of international companies that are in Estonia raising kids in Estonia is very safe and considering all the social benefits that you get it's definitely something that is worth the effort of being a woman in Estonia at the same time uh, knowing how much trouble people all around the world go through to have kids and having to go back to work like barely three or six months later after they had a kid I really appreciate the fact that if I ever decide to have kids or get to the point where I get to have kids I can stay home for up to three uh, years and my job is there once I go back our education system, the fact that you can get free um, university degree, like pay nothing. By the time you graduate, you already know three or four different languages, which is a huge benefit when you think about it, about going to the rest of the world, right? So in workplaces, um, there is still a gap between the salaries that women and men are paid. And there are occasionally some conservative viewpoints about how women uh, should stay at home and uh, you know raise kids and do stuff but uh, not run around uh, running businesses even though there are lots of Estonian startups uh, run by female CEOs and even though women have proven constantly that they are cap capable enough to handle the same kind of things that men do. Regarding uh, politics, probably a disadvantage because women aren't taken that seriously that they can be politicians. Um, though I can see that there's been a huge change in the last five years in Estonia. I see a lot more women in the uh, political scene. Um, yes, we have our first female president, which is amazing and great. We have also our prime minister who's female right now. And I think that's a welcome change. Uh, considering how masculine and how big of a circus it's been for a while now. In our culture, um, women are always seen as somebody that is very strong. For some reason, there's a saying that Estonian women are strong, that we are such individuals that we can handle everything and do everything on our own. Um, but I think um, it's kind of a mixed message. Yes, Estonian women are strong and we are individuals and we can handle everything on our own. But it's not always the thing that we want. When you think about the fact that women tend to work and raise kids and do everything on their own. And the amount of um, single parents, single moms there are in Estonia. Then I would say Estonian women are strong and powerful. But... At what cost? I don't think that they always want to be like that. I think they would want to expect Estonian men to step up and find their own like inner masculinity and power as well. We don't allow ourselves to be treated anything less than an equal. And in a lot of cases, Estonian women can be very proud as well. I, I would say pride has something to do with these things too. I guess there's a lot of uh, parts of Estonian uh, women that do not get discussed as well the fact that some women are trapped at their homes uh, because they don't earn as much money especially when they have kids uh, it's not as easy to leave your partner and to um, get by on your own um, even though for the first few years the social benefits are great when you have a kid um, after that you're kind of pretty much left on your own this being independent part is a it's a curse when you are too proud to ask for help and I think that's an issue um, within Estonian culture in general that people are too proud to ask for help so they kind of struggle in silence and uh, they deal with their own thing that it's forever been like this we have to handle ourselves and there's nobody gonna be there to help us out mm, yes I would say that I probably think one part of it is related to that or more related to connotation that people often put feminist and strong and independent in the same um, framework same sentence they they kind of make it equal to each other which I don't think is valid um, and of course there's always this uh, polarity up in the air it's like uh, if 
you say that you're a feminist, then you're kind of uh, giving the connotation that women are somehow more superior than men. So maybe that's the reason why why you know people wouldn't identify with. The other part is that then you would always have to fight for your um, opinions. And this is something that I don't think that a lot of people want to do. You can be um, shamed quickly if you speak your mind a lot and all the time. But at the same time, there are plenty of feminists in Estonian society that tend to do that. So from my perspective, I don't see anything shameful for it. But I personally would not want to put myself in a position where there's going to be a bunch of uh, somebodies that uh, are going to question my opinions and my ideas so I guess there's some sort of uh, unwritten rule <laughs> that uh, you don't put yourself into a position where people might critique you because I think in Estonian society it's uh, quite important uh, to a lot of people what other people think about you you can see that even when you know people avoid talking about money or, or cars or how much they earn or where do they live For me personally, uh, female friendships work uh, very well in Estonia. Mm, the ones that I have, and I don't actually... Uh, I would consider my friends to be like close friends and acquaintances. Uh, for me personally, it's not been an issue because I tend to be fairly open-minded. So I don't really turn another woman into competition for myself. Uh, but I can see how that can be an issue. Uh, in general... Um, I don't again know whether I would put that down on women. I don't think it's just women's problem. But uh, the amount of support that has been shown um, amongst women uh, about entrepreneurship or, or being a mother and, and you know supporting one another has not been that great in, in, like in a bigger picture, I would say. Estonians are known for being friends that um, initially might have a hard shell, but eventually, once we open up, we uh, really tend to uh, hold our friends or hold our friendships and our relationships. If, in my opinion, loneliness is a problem in Estonia, um, yes, I would say loneliness is a problem in Estonia. There's this saying that, are you lonely or are you alone there's a difference there i think in general estonians are the kind of people that like being alone and on their own they're more introverted reserved more holding to themselves but of course there's always extroverts in within the crowd as well that enjoy you know the hustle and the bustle and having people around it's not in our DNA or not in our society to check up on everybody and to call your mom and dad every day or, or call your grandma and grandpa every day or even to come together as friends every day then there might be people who kind of fall through the cracks that get somewhere in between that aren't able to find friends that stick with them and that aren't able to maybe hold those relationships as long so yes the being lonely or loneliness can be an issue here as well. So some say that Estonian women typically value their relationship with their mother and grandmother more than most other European women. If that's accurate, what's the reason they have such strong bonds? A good question. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. I personally um, valued the most my bond with my grandmother. Um, main reason being the fact that when we were kids we were kind of shipped off to the to grannies and grandpa's place and and you know while our moms and dads were working and grannies generally have more time to spend with their kids and to listen to the stories and do stuff so the generation where i grew up our parents uh, were mostly working all the time so it's it's not it wasn't as easy as it is for my generation who can take off three years, you know, and stay at home and, and grow that bond between moms and daughters and and grandmas and so on. Also, you have to take into account that 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, the relationships were way different than they are right now. I have worked quite a lot 
on my relationship with my mom because I felt quite isolated when I was growing up. I felt not understood. I felt I was an emotional kid that was tr that they tried to put into a box and you know follow some rules which did not make any sense to me. Whereas my uh, grandma kind of allowed me to be who I was. So this kind of uh, clash between me and my mom um, was expected. The good part is that nowadays this relationship is way different and I think this changes as well once people have kids. Uh, for sure, so for my experience in the tech field at the time it was still quite a new thing. I used to work for uh, startups, I worked for Skype, I worked for Microsoft, I worked for a startup called Fleep. Um, and then uh, a few places here and there, but in general, my career was techie in, in the past and nowadays I'm a graphic designer, so it's uh, completely different than what I was doing back in the day. Um, at the time, um, I would say important jobs were still led mostly by men around 15 years ago. So, And by now, in the last 15 years, a lot of changes have happened. So the startup scene has evolved quite a lot. Estonia, being a small country as we are, our startup scene or Estonian mafia has worked very closely together with each other, uh, regardless of the fact whether the, the CEO of the startup was uh, male or female. Uh, and I know female CEOs definitely uh, need a lot more support due to the fact that in other cultures uh, women are not so considered to be so capable. So even though in Estonia maybe men have come to grow into this position where they consider us as equals when it comes to running tech companies and doing things, then there's a lot of uh, backlash from the rest of the world. And this is usually where the tech scene goes, you know, Estonia is tiny, if you want to make it big you have to be open to the rest of the world. It's not that you can get big here in Estonia doing your thing only in Estonia. Our market is too limited for that. So I would say it was definitely an issue there. And for me as a trainer I noticed it a couple of times when there were issues, when we for instance went to Egypt and I had a classroom full of like women and then two men or three men that you know barely did anything in there because they considered themselves to be above everybody else in the class. So they actually felt uh, too proud to learn something from a woman because in their culture it's not a common thing. Whereas when I went to, let's say, Hungary or or even UK or Stockholm or wherever, it's, it was usually pretty fine. Like, there wasn't any issue. Nobody was looking at me weird or funny, like, hey, female trainer, what are you trying? Are you trying to teach something to us? Nope, not an issue. Or when we were organizing events, then uh, I guess men even sometimes maybe prefer the fact that women are organizing stuff. So they like everything to get done and then they come and, you know, take the stage. Because <laughs> I feel like that was kind of the, the, the feel there. I would say it changed a lot in the last 15 years, uh, especially from the part as well that a lot more women are going to the university to study IT. Uh, I think there's has been done a lot of work in in terms of STEAM, you know, getting um, uh, children to learn uh, science and IT from very early on, and not just boys, but also both uh, boys and girls. There's a few initiatives here in Estonia, starting from D Gruppe, which was kind of like called Tiger Jump, which was kind of getting all the kids onto computers and getting computers into every school uh, when I was still a kid. And nowadays it's uh, turned into, uh, you know, different robotics um, uh, groups, uh, initiatives where both uh, kids... Uh, kids, yeah, both kids, both uh, boys and girls can uh, study robotics and IT and all that kind of stuff. So, for instance, uh, one of my friend's uh, kid who's now turning, I think, 13 or 14, uh, she's been taught very early on how to program, how to, uh, you know, program a robot to do certain things. Uh, she's been directed into the startup scene, the startup world. If you live somewhere in Tallinn or Tartu, then you have quite a lot of opportunities to go and study IT already early on and I think that definitely encourages kids to think bigger and to for women in general as well to believe uh, in the fact that they can do stuff so I know quite a few capable female CEOs that are also enforcing that kind of uh, equality in their own company so that's why I'm kind of rooting for there to be more female leaders because 
they tend to have a different kind of approach. We just care about the fact that job gets done. Whereas sometimes I feel like men can get stuck in, in between the notion. Like your friend gets the job, but maybe not the, that very capable female colleague. For sure, uh, cultural backgrounds play a huge role. Uh, going as a woman to US is a way different experience than going as a woman to Egypt or going as a woman to Stockholm. Stockholm, for instance, is uh, or, or Sweden in general, is a place where you are uh, treated quite as an equal um, in the workplace. There is uh, way less, as far as I know, as far as I've experienced, way less um, prejudice and misogyny happening there. Whereas in the US, uh, men tend to somehow think that they are above you when they uh, have a higher job than you do and they don't really consider you to be equal. Whereas in Estonia, for a lot of those companies where I used to work, um, the, um, the approach was that everything, we're on the same level, kinda. I could always approach my boss or my boss's boss. So it wasn't that big of an issue. And when it goes to Egypt, well, that's a whole different kind of ball game, I would say. That's, that's way different. So culture plays a huge role in terms of what our opportunities are. So that's why I'm super happy that I was born in Estonia and I was raised in Estonia because it gave me so many advantages, like having, you know, plenty of languages, three or four languages. I, I speak fluently four languages. When it comes to my current field, which is graphic design, um, there's plenty of women here as well, I would say, although it's been also widely uh, led by male uh, designers. Mostly I would just say because they're uh, a lot more loud and a lot more open to presenting themselves. I think there's always gonna be a little bit of uh, caution when it comes to women. Being proud of my job, there's always this kind of imposter syndrome or am I worthy enough to do this job uh, type of uh, notion going together with it. And I don't know if this is uh, just about the fact that uh, you're a woman or if that's about the fact that we just tend to be a little bit more cautious about the things that we say and the things that we do and, and how we represent ourselves because there's been a lot of repercussions for uh, for women more than men in the same behavior. Like even when it comes to, let's say, sexual encounters, men are allowed to go and sleep around. Women are considered sluts if they do that. Where's the equality in that? Nothing. Even though we're the same kind of human beings, it's considered, it's it's frowned upon when a woman is doing it. So I think there's still a long way to go um, when it comes to that. And say mostly it's just about the fact that women don't ask, uh, don't dare to ask as much money as men do. And they're, they're much more ballsier in terms of that. So I would say that's a thing. So I've been mostly um, working on my graphic design part so far, uh, which is more of a lucrative job, I guess, in, in the Estonian market, but I'm still not giving up on my artistry. I'm working very hard right now to make sure that my brand art by itself uh, actually becomes into something that is tangible, that people can find some inspiration from and that people will associate with me. What do you think of Kaisa's story? What challenges have you struggled to overcome when following your own dreams? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe and ding the bell for future content. If you wish to support my work, feel free to leave a donation on the crowdfunding website Patreon. It's been Fatally Honest, ciao!